Painted Black in Action, Part 2. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. You've been listening to an interaction between a narcissist and his victim, where she is painted black, and this has resulted in a particular malicious, almost monologue, that has been issued by the narcissist against her. It has been punctuated by the destruction of property and physical violence. It demonstrates the way that the narcissist wholly sees her as painted black, with no redeeming features, that she is an awful, treacherous individual that thoroughly deserves the threats and the physical violence and the insults and the belittlement and the invalidation that he is subjecting her to. We're now going to continue by listening to the footage. Here it comes. Nice things. But now you've killed them. Oh, where's the lie? I think it's time for you to go. I think it's time for you to go and fuck yourself. Go back into crazy world and that's fine. You are the most manipulative person I've ever met. Go on. Please, can you? Get out. Fuck off. Fuck off. Can I please fuck have the house off. for tonight? Fuck off, fuck off, fuck off. I need the house fuck for tonight. Fuck off. I need the house for tonight. Fuck off. I don't have anywhere to go. I don't give a shit. Do you know what? I've never had crazy outbursts until I met you. That was like a new thing that you gave me. Because if you cared have what I, I want... I've really not cared what you want for a very long time. If you cared what I wanted... Then this, I'd have spoke to you in a nicer tone. We wouldn't be here. Then I'd have spoke to you in a nicer tone and everything would have been okay. Yes, it's freaking hilarious. You don't need to be anywhere anymore. You're not important. Shut up, child. The narcissist commences, even though you can hear the elevated breathing of the victim. You found someone who was happy. You dragged them through shit and nice things, and now you've killed them. What a waste of my life. Utilization of guilt and insult. The victim again, rather than actually getting away from this individual, just states, I think it's time for you to go. The narcissist replies, I think it's time for you to go and fuck yourself. If you want to go back into crazy mode, then that's fine. Utilization of the suggestion that the victim is crazy. You are the most manipulative person I have ever met. Projection. Go on. Please can you, ask the victim. Get out. Fuck off. Fuck off. Can I please have the house for tonight? Ask the victim. Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. Fuck off. Insult. Ordering around. I need the house for tonight. Fuck off. I need the house for tonight. Fuck off. I need the house for tonight. Fuck off. I don't have anywhere to go. Of course, the narcissist has no emotional empathy for this victim. I don't give a shit. Do you know what? 
I've never had crazy outbursts until I met you, blame shifting. That was like a new thing that you gave me. The victim is a little more forceful, because if you cared what I want, he then moves back closer towards her, I have really not cared what you want for a very long time, belittlement. If you cared what I wanted, then I'd have spoken to you in a nicer tone. We wouldn't be here, responds the victim. Then I'd have spoken to you in a nicer tone, everything would be okay. Oh, that's so funny. The victim responds, yes, it's freaking hilarious. The narcissist then replies, shh, you don't need to be anywhere anymore. Invalidation. You're not important, belittlement, shadow child. Utilisation of an insult to suggest that she's something dark and evil. The victim pleads, please stop throwing stuff around. The narcissist answers, what do you even care? And then, with ignited fury, get out, get out. There's the sound of another scuffle and a physical altercation. Ow, ow, says the victim. You need to get out. Come on, out you get. Out, out, out. You don't get to touch my bed. Out, 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 out. Get fucking out. Let's go, let's go. Then the sound of more things breaking. Notice that he's being operating with a sense of entitlement, telling her how she should behave and that she ought to be booted out, that she shouldn't be there, that she isn't allowed to be involved, that she should go, repeatedly invalidating her. Ow! Ow! responds the victim as she's being hauled around. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! issues the narcissist haughtily. Ow! responds the victim. And there's more crying. Yes, 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 says the narcissist. I gave you everything I possibly could, Marta. And if you were a normal person, that would be enough. Suggestion she's not normal, belittlement. You're going to burn me. You're going to burn me. I'm going to die. I feel like your standards for me are very high. You aren't right, are you not? You know that. I genuinely, really, really tried. I'm sorry that it's not the right kind of trying or it's not enough. How am I affecting your safety? Thus, he seeks to push her out of her own home. In so doing, continuing to blame her. That everything about her is now viewed awful because she's painted black as part of this actual sustained devaluation. Thus, an excellent example of a certain type of narcissist dealing with a victim that's painted black. And there's also more information that was posted by the victim in relation to the way that she had been treated, giving us more background about the involvement of the two. This snippet of the interaction between the two of them was posted by the victim on the internet for the purposes of wanting other people to know about what she was subjected to. The victim explained, Unfortunately, this recording isn't an isolated incident, or the worst of the situation. Throughout our six-year relationship, he was physically, emotionally, and psychologically abusive. Thus, you've heard what it was like at the four-year point. She endured another two years of this behaviour. The first time his behaviour was described as such to me was towards the end of the relationship by a counsellor. At that time, I did a deep dive into the meaning of abuse and sought help from various domestic violence charities whilst also seeking a psychologist. This deep dive was challenging. It provided a lot of clarity around what I had experienced. It gave a name to the unease I had been feeling for, le- for years. But it was also confusing. A lot of what I found explored extreme physical violence, and what I needed to understand most was psychological and emotional abuse. When your sense of self has been altered, and you don't trust your own reality, gaslighting, it can be difficult to understand how this looks in practice. I tore through old emails and texts. I eventually found recordings I didn't even know I had that were several hours long. This recording is the tip of the iceberg. Imagine the person you love and trust the most in the world subjecting you to hours of this at a time, finding new ways to insult and degrade you, taking your darkest fears and using them against you, repeating the same verbal abuse on a loop. He had me in a chokehold. 
He's pinned me down, restrained me, slapped me, flicked me, pushed me, dragged me, punched, kicked a hole in the wall, thrown my personal possessions around the room. He's destroyed my personal property, including sentimental items. He's called me a bitch and crazy more times than he told me he loved me, and he told me he loved me a lot. Driven dangerously, threatening us both more times than I can count, among so much more. Whilst living at his grandparents, he threw me to the ground, stood over me, and told me that I disgusted him, that I am less than human, then spat on me. Our spare room door was missing, and the bathroom door didn't fit. It's because he smashed the bathroom door to pieces after I locked myself in there to escape him. I minimised my experiences. I thought domestic violence was being hospitalised for physical offences. In both our minds, he didn't beat me up. I never suffered a concussion, therefore it didn't count as abuse. I now know better. The emotional and psychological abuse he inflicted upon me left me in a state where I didn't trust myself or my reality. I felt like I was constantly spinning on a never-ending teacup ride. I was confused and exhausted. Every time I thought I understood how to keep him happy, the rules changed. I believed that I was so awful and caused so much pain that I didn't deserve to live. In truth, I look back and I'm amazed I'm still here today. Despite the above, I don't have any ill feelings towards him. I understand that his biological father was abusive and childhood trauma alters how you relate to the world. I understand that he was terrified and showed his love the only way he knew. This isn't me excusing him. I know now that nothing excuses his behaviour. It's not my responsibility to fix him. I am not bad for leaving him. You are not responsible for anyone's happiness but your own. If anyone reading this has experienced something similar, please know they do not change. They are warping their own reality as much as yours. Just because they apologise doesn't mean they truly understand what they have done or why it is wrong. You can't change your actions without first truly taking accountability. You can't take accountability without looking at your actions and the pain they cause. He was multiple people to me. He was beautiful, loving and caring, but then he would switch. He became my tormentor who was cruel, relentless and ruthless. I've also shared this recording with people close to him, who I believe who are in a position to provide support for the women after me. I was asked by one person to share more of the recording providing additional context. Doesn't change how he's treating me. Nothing I ever did or could do explains or justifies his behaviour. I also don't want to be caught in trying to prove my lived experiences. I don't need pity, support or validation from the people who were in my life at that time. My past experiences don't define me. It's how we respond to the challenges we experience that shape who we are. I know I've already said it, but I don't need for you to believe me. I just need you to listen, be aware and look after those you care about. Thus, that was a message from the victim posted with the video, and it's worthwhile for context to explain more about the way that he had behaved. Now, having heard that excerpt of the behaviour, what type of narcissist are we looking at? Well, he doesn't have the awareness or the charisma, and from the background circumstances, it doesn't appear that he has the wealth or the reach or the large fuel matrix that would be associated with a greater narcissist, so we can exclude that. There's the destruction of property and physical violence, which are both lesser traits. There's false compassion exhibited, a mid-range trait, false contrition also, mid-range trait, he offers apologies, but we know they're not genuine, a mid-range trait. He operates a veneer towards her and evidently a facade to the outside world, judging by the comments that were made. He shows a fairly high control threshold on his ignited fury also. He doesn't shout and scream like other narcissists that you've heard in this series, but rather his delivery is done in a way where it's this seething malice. He's evidently of a degree of intelligence, but he also, of course, has that very much mid-range mentality of victimhood, that he sees him as the good person that's been corrupted by her, that he sees her as the problem. Although he has the lesser behaviours of physical violence and the destruction of property, that's where it would end with regard to a lesser. His, threat, his control threshold on his ignited fury is too high for a lesser. He operates a facade, which is also the 
a fact that would take him away from being a lesser. The cognitive function generated by the the language and words that he uses suggests that he's unlikely to be a lesser or so, although that could have fallen within upper lesser. But he doesn't demonstrate the behaviours of a, a lesser. Although he is bullying, he doesn't show the bombastic, explosive nature of the upper lesser type B, and he doesn't have the huge self-confidence and charm that would be associated with the upper lesser type A. He evidently shows insecurities, which are mid-range behaviour also. Lower mid-range would not be appropriate, notwithstanding the two lesser traits. This leaves us with middle middle range A, middle middle range B, and upper mid range. There are some slight pity plays in there, but they're not extensive. And ultimately, this is an individual who believes that he's better than other people and wouldn't use pity plays too often. Therefore, I would exclude middle middle range type B. He certainly sees himself as a good person. He certainly sees himself as someone that has been corrupted by her. But he's not passive-aggressive enough for middle-middle-range type A. The fact that he has restrained her, slapped her, flicked her, pushed her, dragged her, punched her, etc., thrown personal possessions around the room, but he does so all within a degree of control, as you've heard throughout. There is this malice that seeps from him as he talks, that he sees himself as superior to her and everybody else, that he does have a higher control threshold for a mid-range narcissist, that he regards himself as able, the way that he talks about the threat about imagining her in a beautiful dress and a beautiful bouquet, the way that he talks, her, talks about her being a shadow child, etc. There is that sort of grandiosity. One can imagine that he engages in quite a bit of showmanship, and therefore, ultimately, one would place him as upper mid-range. Although he's the big man when it comes to bullying his intimate partner primary source, you can imagine that he would engage in a war of words with somebody, but would shrink very much from the presentation of physical violence if someone more physically imposing came his way, demonstrating, of course, very much his mid-range credentials, and therefore not greater. Based upon the information contained in that excerpt and also the background information from the victim, the likely outcome for him would be upper mid-range. Did you take that view also? Let me know your observations in the comments section. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.